So welcome to the first video on the discrete structure series and in this video we'll be looking at two specific uh, topics uh, the inclusion exclusion principle and then later we're going to look at a uh, computer representation of sets so the different ways uh, sets can be represented in in computers and the drawbacks the pros and cons of, of each so getting into the first topic so the inclusion exclusion principle is actually a counting technique that helps us estimate the number of you know elements that belong to the union of sets right and it could be two sets three sets any number of sets and we could use this principle to kind of compute the union to show you what i mean let let us consider this typical example that we've always known of a union b and we know this is equal to a plus b we want to take everything in a and everything in b but if there's any intersection between a and b we are kind of counting that twice right so we want to simply subtract the intersection so this is the formula for the union right so if i if i want to have the number of uh, elements in the union i would take the number in each of these individual categories and then use this formula and what's the takeaway here so there will be a reveal but okay hang on with me so let's consider this this example what about three sets a union b union c so you probably already know the formula but let us approach this in a little bit of a different approach if we can so i want you to consider all different types of intersections or intersection containing all uh, you know number of permutations of these three variables so what do i mean so if i look at intersection of all three variables a b and c there's really only one way to to find that right it's going to be the intersection between a b and c right there's no no other way if i change a b or c it, it doesn't give me a new intersection so let me also do that for two and maybe it'll be a little bit more clear so if i were to only choose two at a time how many different intersections could i form so i could say there is an intersection between a and b there could be there could be one between b and c again this could be another between c and a right so these three intersections are possible if i'm choosing two at a time now if i choose only one at a time yeah there is not really any intersection for the but you know for the sake of it let's just mention them a b c right and this is the case when i'm choosing only one of them this is the case when i'm choosing two and this is the case when i'm choosing three right and coming back to this this inclusion exclusion principle what this tells us to do is to take everything you know start from one obviously start from the first layer include everything and go to the second layer exclude all of that go to the third layer include that again for the fourth one you would exclude and then it alternates right and you you could do that for any number of sets and that should give you the union formula so does it really work so you know what does this give us so it, it really gives us a plus b plus c because you would have understood right include would mean to to add right to to include and, and exclude would mean to subtract to to remove so all these things i want to subtract so minus a intersection b minus b intersection c minus c intersection a and then these things or there's only one thing here i want to include so this would be plus a intersection b intersection c and this is indeed the formula for the union of three sets a b and c so the idea is this should work generally for any number of sets and uh, if we go back to our example that involved uh, two sets a, a union b did it really come by the inclusion exclusion principle and yeah it really did so if i will take a and b just do it quickly so i could take permutations of two and that would only give me one intersection that would be a intersection b and if i take you know individual permutations of, of just one it's either a or b right and this all will be included i'll just write an i and this will be excluded right so we'll, we'll just be getting a plus b for these two included terms minus a intersection b you know i did this in this corner you know maybe it doesn't look too good but this would be uh, enough to get you an idea of, of uh, what the principle is so nothing too fancy right but if, if you were asked to define this a little bit more formally you could go you know saying something like the inclusion exclusion principle allows us to calculate union of any number of sets so we do that process by first taking permutations of one you know set at a time and then two sets at a time progressively until all permutations are reached and for each permutation we start by including and then excluding and including alternatively and then once we do that the result should be 
the union of those sets, right? So this is the inclusion exclusion principle. Coming to our next topic of the video, the computer representation of sets. And this is kind of like an abstract topic to some extent because, you know, it is kind of dependent on how an architecture in a computer decides to represent uh, anything, right? We're just going to look at it in a very abstract. So uh, how abstract? Let's say we want to represent a set in a computer. There's a set called A and has one, two, three, three elements. So the way I could do this is I could simply represent it as a B shown or, or a JSON or whatever a hash map data structure is, right? For JavaScript, it's JSON. I think it's, it's called hash map in C and in other languages. But the idea is maybe we, we store it in some sort of a dictionary data structure where the order doesn't really matter, right? So this, this, this is just a set like it would be with no order to the elements. And if I have another set, B, uh, with some other elements, let's say A, B, and C. And the, the question is, if I, if I represent these sets in these ways, in unordered ways, what problems am I going to face? So one is the computation of, of all the set operations becomes extremely difficult. So let's say I need to calculate the union, A union B. So I need to go through the first set A, and then I need to go through the second set B, also need to make sure none of the elements are repeated, so to speak, right? Because that needs to be checked also. I cannot repeat elements. So kind of a search is needed uh, across these two sets. It's, it's expensive. So so is intersection, right? It doesn't really matter that I'm calculating in intersection because in order to find intersection, I need to compare each element in, in a set with potentially every element in, in the other set, right? In the worst to, to figure out whether this exists or not. These, these operations are really computationally expensive. And I think the takeaway here is that, you know, we should uh, not have unordered ways of representing set in computers. So what alternatives do we actually have? So this is one way that is uh, given in our syllabus. So let's just consider this one. Uh, this one, you know, involves considering a universal set. Let's say I consider a universal set of elements, let's say one through 10. 1 through 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, the joy of counting, and finally 10. Okay, now this is my universal set, and I want to represent, let's say, a set A that has elements 1, 3, 5, and 7. How would I do that? So my idea is I would, so let me just use this bracket, right? Because I want to show that I'm actually storing these things in order. The idea is the elements in, in the universal set in, in my representation would be in, in a certain order already so that it's not necessary to search in the full depth. So if I want to represent this, this set, because, you know, the universal set is not what I'm trying to represent. I'm trying to represent this set, right? So this should be a valid set representation. So one, three, five, seven, without, you know, any, any, any order to these elements, how would I represent a set containing one, three, five, seven? So what I would do is I would write a new array, the same size of the universal set, right? So these 10 elements, so I'm going to put 10 elements in here, but each of my elements are only going to be either a zero or a one. So if the, the element in the universal set belongs to my set, I'm going to use a one to indicate that. Otherwise I'm going to use a zero. So for my case, one exists here. So that will indicate it by a one, two doesn't exist. So that'll be a zero, three does exist. So it will be a one, four doesn't exist, it will be a zero. I think you get the idea here. So five does exist, it's a one. Six doesn't exist, it's a zero. Seven, one, eight and nine will both be zero, right? So the idea here is this representation is the same as this set, right? And what is the real advantage of actually doing this, right? Is, is there any advantage to do this? So we will we'll see that next. So let's consider an example to, to, to see the usefulness of, of representing sets uh, that way, right? So uh, coming back to the same example, I'll just put the universal set here again. And let's say the set that I had, one, three, five, seven, and this would be equivalent to the representation. Okay, so 10 elements, zeros for the one that don't belong and one for the ones that do belong. Let's say another set B, and uh, that is a set containing, I want to keep something in an intersection. So uh, let us say five, seven, and nine, why not? So if this is my set, this would be analogous to the representation. Nothing from one to four is included, all zeros. So this would be the representation, right? Now, how does this, this help me? 
So let, let us look at a few set operations. So if I want to say A union B, what I'm going to need to do is I'm not going to have to, you know, now go into each set and, and look at each element and then see if they're repeating and so on. With this representation, all, I'm, all I need to do is to take a logical OR of the individual bits, right? So when I take an OR operation, what I want to do is I want to ensure at least one of these two, two inputs is a one, right? So if I'm taking zero or zero, you know, plus is an OR in Boolean algebra, it's going to give me zero, right? But if I take, you know, zero, anything, right? One or anything, I'm going to get a one. So the idea is uh, I, I can simply do a bitwise OR of these arrays in order to get my union. So A union B would just be the representation. So if I take a bitwise OR, one or zero is one. And that's what that's all I'm doing, right? So I'm looking at, at, at each element and, and seeing if I should put it in, into the new set, right? And if, if it is a member of the first set, I want to put it. And if it is a member of the second set, I want to put it too. So all I want to do is to check if one of the two values is a one, right? And the OR operation does that. So I'll not just com complete this, but you can, you know, pretty much complete this easily. Uh, the next operation, A intersection B, is you would have guessed it, and operation, right? So basically, I want those those entries that are a part of both sets A and B. So that would go, you know, something like you know, uh, bitwise and. So I would take the first element of this set one against the first element of this set zero, and that would give me a zero. If I take a second against second, that'll give me a zero. But finally, when I find something that inter you know intersects, that element will have a one in both cases, right? And that would give me, you know, the, the final set. So really trivial. You know, I didn't complete it, but this would be really obvious. Union, intersection, how about set difference? How can I, you know, take the difference A minus B, right? And this one is a little bit tricky because you'll need to transform it in a way. So A minus B is actually logical equivalent to A and B complement, right? And, and let me get back to this in a little bit because I missed complements. So the way you do complement is, you know, the complement of a set is, is, you know, simply flip each bit, right? So if it's a zero, have it as a one. If it's a one, have it as a zero. So whatever members were, were there previously won't be there anymore. And whatever were not there will start to, to belong. So that's how you, you know, capture a complement. So this will be equivalent to some set as well. Now, in terms of difference, you know that the difference is A and B complement. And why is this? By definition, right? So A minus B is anything that is in A and not in B. So anything that is in A and not in B, right? So this is the definition of a difference. Now, this I can compute because I already know how to compute a complement of a B. I simply flip all the bits and I know how to calculate an intersection, right? So in order to calculate an intersection, I just need to do a bitwise AND. So that will give me the result for A minus B. So these are really the four set operations, union, intersection, complement, and difference. And you could see how having one universal set and, and these bit representation of sets really, you know, makes these processes much, much faster, right? So I hope this, this makes some sense. You know, I, I, I you know, did a, some of something of a lazy work, not filling these in, but this should really be obvious. So yeah, if you have any questions, you could put them in the comments. I think that's it for this video. So we'll be looking into functions starting next video. So I hope to see you then. Have a good day.